1985's Fright Night is a movie with a very simple premise. Simple, but effective. It's, of course, from 85, so it has a lot of the typical 80s camp you would expect from a movie from that time period. Uh, some movies, I, I feel like the 80s is kind of just, just like a, um, a golden age, in my opinion, of horror, because you have all kinds of movies. You have movies that are more like psychological horror, body horror, and you also had movies that were just your typical camp, such as being the case with Fright Night. Um, Fright Night is a very simple, it's a movie with a very simple premise. Think Disturbia, but, or Rear Window, but with vampires. Uh, the main plot is that Charlie, the main character, discovers that his neighbor may or may not be a vampire. So he decides to look more into his suspicion of his neighbor potentially being a vampire. And of course, lo and, lo and behold, he finds out his neighbor is a vampire. Uh, Charlie proceeds to freak out and uh, his neighbor eventually comes to confront him about, uh, you know, him looking into uh, him potentially being a vampire and telling him, you know, hey, if you don't back off, bad things are going to happen, which is pretty much what happens in this movie is Charlie's neighbor going after him, uh, Charlie's vampire neighbor going after him, going after his friends, uh, going after his potentially going after his family and uh, that's pretty much the plot of this movie like I, I don't want to say too much else without giving away spoilers uh, Charlie of course tries to enlist the help of the police which is of course unsuccessful because once Charlie kind of goes into uh, the, his suspicion of his neighbor potentially being a vampire the police officer he the, he tries to get to uh, help him kind of just laughs off his claims and the police is kind of no longer an option then, uh, uh, Charlie tries to, attempts to enlist the help of a celebrity, at least in the universe of the movie, a celebrity by the name of Peter Vincent, who is apparently was an actor in Planet of the Apes. I am not too familiar with him, but that's the only, it, it, another thing about this movie is actually kind of surprising. There's not really a lot of big names in here. There's, a uh, uh, Chris Sarandon, who is the, um, I completely forget his name, but the, uh, the neighbor who is the vampire and uh he's been in quite a few different things but i don't really he's not a big name um and the guy who plays peter vincent who was in the planet of the apes movie and he i mean maybe at the time he was a big name but any like you know what nowadays we're gonna be like who is who, who are any of these people but i would argue the movie doesn't really need any big name actors the actors they get for this movie do a really damn good job in the roles that they play but i'm kind of sidetracking here um so charlie tries to enlist the help instead of peter vincent because he runs peter vincent and the reasoning for it is so stupid because peter vincent runs the tv program uh known as fright night which is some like tv program that shows all these old um <laughs> these really old obscure horror movies and because Peter Vincent played a vampire hunter in one of these movies, uh, Charlie believes that Peter Vincent in real life is, you know, knows a lot about vampires and wholeheartedly believes that vampires exist. Which, of course, Peter Vincent in the movie is an actor and does not actually believe in what he says, which he straight up tells Charlie in the beginning of this movie, but Charlie will not be deterred. He consistently tries to pursue Peter Vincent and tr tries to get his help. Uh, his friends go to Peter Vincent to try to get Peter Vincent's help, and Peter Vincent reluctantly, of course, agrees to help, but of course, for money. Uh, and then, of course, Peter Vincent eventually, inadvertently, uh, just because he does not see the vampire, the uh, Charlie's neighbor's reflection in a mirror, is convinced in that way that this is a vampire we're dealing with. <laughs> so basically just by, you know, basically not because Peter Vincent believed, you know, was actually a vampire hunter, but because he found out, oh shit, this is actually a vampire I'm dealing with. Peter Vincent, uh, well, at first Peter Vincent doesn't want to do this. And I'm, I don't want to spoil too much. I'll just say because I actually really like this part of the movie. <laughs> like this is part of the movie was one of the main things that I actually think is one of the major like really good things about the movie aside from all the really good you know the good practical effects which i could go into a little bit movie has really good practical effects like uh especially in one scene where peter vincent goes up against a vampire who's also a werewolf which i'm not exactly sure how that works but don't think about it too much uh that scene in particular was really really good like just the uh the way they did that um it almost kind of gave me some american werewolf in london vibes it wasn't that good but it was 
it, it was is very convincing. It very good, very good effects in this movie. This movie has some great practical effects. Really good soundtrack too. A lot of eighty synth, a lot of uh, a lot of saxophone. So a lot of things you would associate with the eighties. Hence, you know, me saying this is really eighties camp. Um, but uh, yeah, Peter Vincent. Um, I will say, just he kind of goes through a character arc in this movie. He sort of goes from the reluctant. I guess you would say he's kind of like the reluctant hero. Um, he doesn't want to be involved at first, and then he eventually just um, embraces the role of the vampire hunter, even though that's not who he really is in real life. He embraces that role. And I think that was a pretty cool part of the movie, actually. It was kind of something I didn't necessarily expect. Um, I actually thought that Peter Vincent was going to be like one of those characters who just, um, like, you know, he's not who he was... Uh, portrayed to be in the movie and he just kind of runs away and you know you never hear from him again i was actually kind of surprised when he ends up being like one of the major characters in the movie and you know is the character who really ends up helping charlie out a lot in the end you know because of course charlie can't couldn't, couldn't really do all this by himself so peter vincent actually is really integ uh, integral to like uh um you know just def trying to defeat this vampire in the movie um but this is one of those movies that just kind of, um, I didn't really, um, I just kind of forgot about, like, I've heard of the movie, but I never really, um, watched it. And I'm kind of upset that I didn't watch it until now, because this was a really good movie. Uh, like I mentioned, acting in this is really good. Of course, the, the plot is very simple. It's your neighbor is a vampire, um, you know, and he's, uh, he's going to kill you you gotta kill him before he kills you and just kills your family and all that kind of stuff uh there's not really a lot of backstory given to the villain you know the vampire himself uh there are hints there, there are little hints here and there you know that he's of course lived for a very long time um all the typical vampire tropes you've come you know typical vampire tropes um but there's nothing wrong with that like i didn't really have a problem with it and i think the movie just g gives us just enough uh information on this guy to where it's like do we really need to know that much about him? I would argue not really. You know, he's basically your typical, like, Dracula-esque vampire. Uh, he tries to charm women. He basically, you know, he, you have to invite him into your house. Uh, crosses can hurt him. Holy water can hurt him. It's, you know, it's basically your typical vampire. And it's, you know, again, don't really have a problem with that. Like, you know, it's not, not really your Nosferatu vampire where he's just an ugly son of a bitch. Although there are some scenes where he is an ugly son of a bitch, but... Uh, uh, he's really just kind of disguising that under his uh, youthful appearance, whereas he might be actually like hundreds of years old. So that's why I say he's more like a Dracula-esque vampire more than just kind of the Nosferatu vampire who just kind of hides away and just kind of stalks his prey at night and doesn't really actually like come out and interact with humans or anything like that. Um, uh, but yeah, this movie, like, there's not too much else to say about it. Really good acting, really good effects. Like, and I, I, like I said, I really hate that this movie kind of escaped me for the longest time. Like, I didn't even really uh, care to, you know, didn't really try to watch it. Um, I saw it was on Prime. Decided to check it out because, you know, I, I am a fan of 80s horror movies and I'm a fan of the horror genre in general. So I figured I would like it. And... It was great. It's just I don't know if you'd say it's a hidden gem. It's it's a movie that I feel like it was definitely popular at the time, but I just don't really feel like people. Um, it's it's also just one of those movies that I think probably got away from some people. Like they know about it, but they haven't actually seen it. So I would definitely highly recommend watching this movie. Uh, you can watch it on Prime, and of course you can also get it on Blu-ray. Um, there is also a remake of the movie, and I'm not really sure if I'm going to watch that. I, I'm kind of interested now because I hear the remake isn't actually that bad. Um, it's a more serious take on the story, which I'm not averse to. I'm not, I'm not opposed to that. Um, but some people, of course, are like, well, this isn't as good as the original. There's some CG that's used, which is kind of understandable given that it was uh, that it came out back in 2013. And even now, like CG is just just in general, CG is something that's just pretty much everywhere. Um, I feel like if they had used practical effects, that would have been something that would have been a little bit unique about the movie because that's not what we we don't really see a lot of that nowadays. Um, but yeah, as for this movie, at least the 1985 Fright Night, I would have to say this is definitely, I would say an eight. I'm trying to uh, definitely an eight. Um, I want to say nine, but it's not. I just I'm not feeling a nine. I'm I'm feeling more like an eight because if it were a nine, it would have to do something that would really, really make it stand out. And 
it's a great movie it's a fun movie but it's not a movie that is like up there with the greats i would say like it's um it's fine it's a great movie it's a fun time but it never really surpasses that if that makes any sense um a very comparable movie to this actually would probably be something like the lost boys uh if you want something that's pretty similar i would say check that out i might have to review that someday too because i haven't actually reviewed that movie another really good vampire movie from the 80s but yeah if you're in the mood for vampires if you're in the mood for a really good horror movie from the 80s and you haven't seen this and you've heard of it highly recommend it really good you won't regret it so uh yeah uh i guess until next time i will see you all later